<clears throat> People's allergies hanging on. Mine are just still hanging on. It's driving me crazy. And I thought I went to Ohio last week and I thought I won't have any allergies up there, but the pollen is just starting up there. So we got off the plane. I was like, ah, all the trees are just barely budding out and just spitting that pollen out. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, I know it's bad. It's pretty neat. We saw everything Cleveland had to offer. <laughs> Not much. <laughs> Everybody kept saying, go to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So finally, we just like, we decided, no, we're not going to go. Everybody keeps telling us to go. <laughs> Jennifer doesn't really like rock. She's a country girl. I, I know some of the bands, but I wasn't going to drag her through it. So. so the one tourist thing they have, we didn't go to. <laughs> Yes. Yes. Oh, let me look. Um, I think I'm cool. The You know what slide number? Um, 11 and 12. 11 and 12. Yeah, I think so. Because, um, let me see. For sure, polyethylene, polyvinyl chloride, polypropylene, polystyrene. Yeah, Teflon, polytetrafluoroethylene, PTFE. Let me just go through and give you all of the little abbreviations. Yeah, the next one says know these two. Okay, so let's let's pull that up. Okay. <clears throat> um, let's see. Let me switch some things around. And drop that off. Okay, and let's see what this says. All right, very good. Okay, so let's. Um, so these are the these are the monomers. So if you know the monomer like this, you should know that that <clears throat> is ethylene. And so to know if that's ethylene, then the, the polymer is polyethylene. This is um, vinyl chloride. So the vinyl part is that double bonded, the, the ethylene part. And then whenever you have a substituent on it, typically it's called vinyl. Like if it had an acetate, it'd be vinyl acetate. If it was a chloride, it'd be vinyl chloride. And so then that's how the, the polymer is named, polyvinyl chloride. But also know these things like this polyethylene is just PE and polyvinyl chloride is PVC. So these are the things that, you know, take this uh, lecture and if you need to make note cards or whatever, then, you know, I'll give you four or five of these monomers and ask you questions about them. Which one of these is PVC? And you need to look at them and know, okay, that's polyvinyl chloride so that you can identify the monomer with the, the abbreviation. Polypropylene, that would be PP. And so these two here have sometimes uh, some uh, added letters like HDPE. Oops, sorry. So high density, low density, high density polyethylene or high density polypropylene. These are very common polymers that you see for like milk jugs and soap jugs and so on that you'll see at the house. You'll see HDPE, HDPP, so you'll know it's polypropylene and polyethylene, and then you'll see LD, the same thing. I'm getting ahead of myself. Okay. LDPE and LDPP. And those, the high density, low density just relates to how cross-linked the polymer is and how how tightly it's been smashed. So the longer chains can be pressed uh, more densely than the, the fuzzy ones. When there's lots of branching, then you have uh, a, a polymer that's difficult to compress. And so those are the low density ones. Just some facts. Polystyrene is PS. And then polytetrafluoroethylene, P-T, 
T-E-F-E. So that's the same as Teflon. Teflon's the brand name. P-T-F-E is the generic name. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Orlon or Acrylan, I never can remember those, so I would be focusing on this. Polyacrylonitrile, P-A-N. And then again, plexiglass, lucite, I don't really remember those brand names, but I would know P-M-M-A. Polymethyl methacrylate, okay. So what's the deal with this methyl methacrylate? Uh, this is the acrylic acid. So if it was just if this uh, CH three was replaced with a with an H, that would be acrylic acid or methyl acrylic acid. But they've they've made an ester out of it. They've made a, made methyl acrylate. So they've they've this acrylic acid they made into uh, an ester with methanol, and so that's the methyl methacrylate. So it's a polymethyl methacrylate. And then polyvinyl acetate. It's kind of you're missing this piece here. Uh, this is where the the um, uh, the ester group is facing the other way. See how the difference? It's kind of the oxygen's lost down here. So it would be CH two CH, and then this is the O is there. Okay. And so that's polyvinyl acetate. So the acetic acid was put with polyvinyl alcohol and the condensation reaction. Remember, you're organic. You remove the water and you link in and make an ester. And so this is the acetate because it was acetic acid that came in and reacted. So polyvinyl acetate, PVA. So just, there's really the sad thing about these is if you don't learn these, then you won't really have a way to answer those questions. So you got to do some memory work. We've got a whole week, so got plenty of time to do it. <clears throat> Reminds me uh, to make sure I, I um, address Thursday. We're going to meet at the police station at 8. Okay, so we won't be here. We'll meet at the police station at 8. There's a, um, there should be a link on Blackboard in terms of the location and the, and the map. You know, So there's a Google Maps link. So you can click there and just be there at 8, um, ready to go. Uh, there's no dress code, but don't don't embarrass the university. Like just wear clothes that you would, you know. If it, they take a picture and put it in the newspaper, uh, you know, I don't want to, some shirt that says something. I don't. You use your judgment. You all are pretty good people, but you know what I'm saying. Don't. Yeah. There's a parking lot up front. Yeah, it's it's big enough. But if you can carpool, it's it's better. I told them to go from eight to nine so that we have 30 minutes to get back to campus so that you can get to your next class. So we're not going to go to 9.15. We'll, we'll finish at 9, and then we can get on back to campus and circle for 10 hours trying to find a parking place. <laughs> the, maybe the the um, Long Johns will still have a few spots. <laughs> you know? <laughs> have you all seen that? It's just being used as a supplementary parking space. Uh, let's see. What about these? Um, Hmm. These really don't have um, some any well-known abbreviations. Okay. And this natural rubber polyisoprene. I mean, there's there's a lot of different versions of this, and so. Um, but like, if you were given this name, like. Can you use your organic chemistry, like a callback trans one for polybutadiene? Okay, well, which one of these? I mean, this is a butane, but is it a diene? No, this is a diene, but it's one, two, three, four, five. So that's five carbons. So that's not buta. So this is the only one that fits butadiene. And so you should, by process of elimination, be able to say, okay, that's polybutadiene. Okay, this one has a chlorine in there. So this doesn't have any chloro in the name, but this one does, chloroprene. Okay, so maybe if it was given the choice and I scrambled these names, this would be the only one with the chloro. So that would make sense. So you should be able to figure out some of these if you're given the full name. Okay.
But all these ones on the previous page are, are have got good abbreviations that we see commonly um, used. Now, Kevlar, have you all read that? That's the only other one that's not listed on those pages. It's in here somewhere. Um, yeah, here's Kevlar, the structure of Kevlar. So look at that structure. And remember, what is, which is, um, what is this linkage called? So let's, you've seen that all through your chemistry career, and it's a very common linkage. Yeah, amide or amide, yes. Okay, so this is a polyamide, and that is what gives structure to proteins, right? The amino acids, they have an amino on one end, an acid group on the other, they make an amide linkage. All those amide linkages, linkages have these planar O, C, and H groups that hydrogen bond to each other. So that's how your proteins make uh, helical structures with this hydrogen bonding and also the beta sheets with hydrogen bonding. So all of those stable structures are because of the amide linkage. Same thing with the Kevlar. So it can form these stable structures that have an intermediate bond that's easily broken uh, that can absorb a lot of energy. So this polymer will crystallize and become very tough. And then when it's insulted, it takes a lot of energy to pull those fibers apart, but you can pull the fibers apart without breaking the fibers. And that's the beauty of Kevlar and why it's such a strong polymer and why we use it for bulletproof vests and things that can under, undergo a lot of strain without breaking the covalent bonds because I can break and remake the hydrogen bonds. And so if this gets hit, those fibers, when they pull those fibers apart, it takes enormous amount of energy, but not so much as to break a covalent bond. So you can pull those fibers apart and then the polymer, given time, some of these things can self heal. It'll snap itself back together and go back to the way it was, um, just depending on the insult. Now, surely with like a bulletproof vest, you're breaking some of the covalent bonds in order to absorb that energy. But this is why this polymer is so strong. Uh, because one, it has the benzene rings, which again, delocalized electrons make that ring able to absorb a lot of insult. Uh, it can stretch, it can deform, but it can snap back. So it's really like the perfect polymer. Benzene rings and amide groups put together, it's, it's an engineered substance. So this is Kevlar. It's a very uh, famous polymer. You should be able to recognize that and discuss why it's so strong. It's the hydrogen bonding and the, the deformation of the aromatic ring that makes it really tough. Okay. That's, that's probably, yeah, on that one, that's probably the main points. Who's next? Yes. I have a question. Um, homework 12. Okay. Um, question 13, I just want to read off. Um, Taking the <laughs> the oh yeah, that is whole that, set of problems. Yeah. Is that like? Is that number twelve? Yeah, there it is, number twelve. Yeah. Is there like a specific formula? Yeah, yeah, you had to go back into the color analysis notes, and so I went ahead and made this, put this in the PowerPoint for the exam three because I knew somebody was going to ask. And so, let's see. Let's go over here and kill this PowerPoint show. show. Yeah, I've got a note. I've got a slide for it. Okay, so I knew this question was coming. So there it is. <laughs> so, oh, there it is. No, nope. come on now. There it is. Okay, so. You have to go back and, and look for uh, this um, next equation. So this is that conversion matrix that Adobe and Microsoft and others dis uh, decided upon to make the standard RGB values. So these are the tristimulus values here, pin. These are the tristimulus values, as you know, and these are called sRGBs. Standard RGB values. And so um, I put this question in here because it was on the homework and you had some time to do it, to go ahead and do this multiplication by hand. In PCHEM 1, we did it by using a spreadsheet. You could have done it by the spreadsheet, but it's good to do it by hand. So, and the other thing too, last year I did it 
the wrong way. So if you watched last year's review video, I did the um, the tri stimulus values x, y, and z, and I left multiplied them by the, the to the matrix, and it's the opposite. So the, these are not commutative. So that's one thing I just want to re uh, reemphasize here as you're going out the door of your college career as a chemistry student to remember that matrix multiplication is not necessarily commutative. What does commutative mean? It means A times B is equal to B times A. That's commutation. So it doesn't matter which order you do the multiplication. And two times four and four times two are the same thing. Because just with scalar values, single numbers, you have a commutative relationship. But because matrix multiplication has both um, uh, multiplication and division, I mean, multiplication and addition, the order of operations matters. And so it's not commutative. So this is not the way you do it. You do it, uh, you do it this way, where the matrix is to the left of the, this um, vector x, y, z. So you write the x, y, z values here, 0 0.7, 0 0.64, and 0 0.09. That's what's from the problem. And then I went ahead and did this uh, by hand. I just reduced it to two significant figures. So we can just show it by hand. So the way the multipl matrix multiplication works is you take this top row times the first column, and that's going to equal the top number. Okay. And so it's 3.2 times 0.7 plus a negative 1.5 times 0.64 plus minus 0.5 times 0.09. Okay, and that equals, um, I've got it right here. It's not exactly what you have in the problem because um, I'm only using two significant figures, but it ends up being a 1.235, 1.2. So this top number, where's my pen? I'm gonna like go in my video and clip all the time, so I'm looking for my pen. Okay, one point, one point two, three five, and then you do the same thing. So this this now this negative one is times point seven, plus one point nine times point six four, plus zero times the other one. And that gives us 0 0.516. And then the last one is 0 0.041. Okay, so these are your S, R, G, B values. But notice they're not in 8-bit numbers. So 8-bit numbers are from 0 to 255. So you just multiply those by 0 or by 255 and scale it up. But the thing is, 255 is the maximum number. So these X, Y, and Z values, when converted to um, RGB, they they pretty much are a scale from zero to one. But if it goes over one, you just cap it at one. Or you cap it at uh, 255 when you multiply these by 255. So this is equal to uh, this vector where it's 255, 132, and 10. Okay, that's not any of the answers, but it's closest to A. And the reason it's not is because I, I truncated those, those decimal values. Okay, but it got as close. That's how you do that problem. So you got to do the, the matrix left multiplying into the X, Y, and Z values, not the other way around. You still got an answer that was closest to A if you did it the other way, but it's not, um, it's not right. So this is the way you do it. Um, now, notice I left this one at 315, so that one was not truncated at 255, and so that's, you know, that's not right because it can't go over 255. Um, if you were to multiply this 1.235 times 255, you get the 315. If you were running out of time, okay, and you're looking at this, um, you, you would be able to eliminate two of these answers. You know that this is a small number, and so it can't be that one, okay? And uh, you know this one is over 255, so it can't be that one. But you really couldn't determine. This is 0.7 and 0.6. They're pretty close to each other, so you're looking at maybe they go over one and then they're both capped at 255 or this one. So you really have to do the math to determine between A and C. But you should be able to at least say, okay, I know it's not the fourth one because the 
the really small number is pegged at 255, and that's not right. So XYZ and RGB kind of go together. So the X is big, that means a big red number. And if the Y is big, that means a big green number. So, and now we take the, the tri-stimulus values just to complete these two. And, and this is um, little x is equal to big X over X plus Y plus Z. So that's pretty easy to do. Just add th those three numbers together and then take X divided by that number and you get 0.49 and you take Y divided by that number, you get 0.45. So that's the, the tri-stimulus values on that chromaticity coordinate diagram. Okay, great. What's next? Who's next? And I have uh, two or three cahoots on this section of the course that we never did in class. And so we can do one of those and it might prime the pump. But I'll wait till make sure everybody's done with their questions that they have. But when y'all are ready, we can take a cahoot. Any more questions or should we do a cahoot? Test our thumbs. Okay. <clears throat> so let's get this going. So let me see if I can do this display capture here. Um, Okay, good. And so, I think this is going to work for me. Yeah, it's going to work. Okay, so we have um, here's the synthetic polymers and fibers one. There's a color analysis, um, gunshot residue. biopolymers those are all legit and uh, I think combustion arson and bombs I'm not sure the L's the, the like the lecture numbers they might correspond yeah okay which one do y'all want which one polymers okay yeah so let's see what was that synthetic polymers this one okay sure All right, there's the pin. <clears throat> yes, love the music. <laughs> They've gotten really fun with the little characters. <laughs> What's that? The mummy with a crown. crown. King Mum. Is that everybody? What have we got? We got 12. Let's see, there's six. Anybody else still waiting to get in? We good? Okay. Which one? Oh, yeah, we're all, yeah. The little wigs, the judges' wigs. Oh, you can change it. Yeah, this is kind of big. <laughs> Did you change? What are you doing? I'm the snowman. Yeah, yeah, orange picking. There you go. All right, so we have 14 people in here. Yeah, I think so. All right, let's go. Spend all our time picking our characters. It's all right. It's fun. which is not a polymerization mechanism. Okay.
it's more like trivia here. Yeah. Boom. All right, very good. Very good. Yeah, so ring opening is the epoxide ring, typically. There's other kinds, too. Condensation is the loss of water, so like the linking of, a, of an acid group and an alcohol group. You lose water, and you make that ester linkage. Same with an amide group. You lose water, you lose the H off the amine, and you lose the OH off the acid group. So you're just left with the carbon carbonyl and the NH to make that amide linkage. And then step growth is a, like a... Um, cation or, or a free radical where it's hopping to the next step. Excellent. Okay. A little review. Scorecard, how fast are your thumbs? Okay. <clears throat> What's the structure? Which structure is the monomer for Teflon? All right. Got kind of an even split on this one. What are you looking for? Why is why is orange the answer? All those fluorines, yeah. Tetrafluoroethylene. Tetrafluoroethylene, yeah. So. Okay. Ethyl cyanoacrylate. Oh, we didn't talk about this one just recently. Yeah, this is very common and very famous in the forensic community. So that'll help you out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, super glue. So that's what they use to fog the fingerprints and it's because it attacks the proteins that are left over behind the friction ridge uh, patterns. Okay, good, you got on that one, didn't you? The difference between low density and high density PE. I did kind of mention this one, so think back 20 minutes ago. <laughs> Short term memory. Yeah, the length and, and the amount of the length of the branches. Yeah. So that's not the same as cross-linking. Cross-linking is two long polymers that are linked together with these little, like rungs on a ladder. So the rungs on a ladder um, can affect the density too, but this is the main point between HD and LD and PE is the amount and length of the branches. <clears throat> Last question. Natural fibers are more complex than the most intricate synthetic fiber. I <laughs> even split 50-50. <laughs> Flipping a coin on that one, are we? <laughs> Just think about the hair, like the structure of hair when we're talking about those polymers, the biopolymers. Um, and, and plant fibers too, they are constructed, I mean, one molecule at a time. And so they're really complex. Sometimes they have cellular structure inside them. So a natural fiber um, should be much easier to identify than, than a synthetic fiber. Think about how organic chemists make things. It's not one molecule at a time, typically. It's a glub, glub, stir, stir, you know, warm it up, dissolve it, crash it out. Very crude methods working with just the average population and you get a bunch of random junk in there. Um, and then they squeeze it through like a shape. So a complex synthetic fiber might be a multi-core, you know, structure, but still it's, it's like one major core fiber surrounded by some other kind of fiber or polymer, core polymer, outside polymer, but only like two layers, maybe three, you know, compared to um you know a hair or something that has all of this other structure in it <clears throat> Ta-da! the mummy king one okay now oh, the cat king no the king's here and yay judge judge duck i don't know is it a... <laughs> yeah very good judge duck so let's go back. Let's see if I can. I gotta twist my head around. Somewhere. 
And let's go back to the library. This is if you find search for Kim underscore prof on Kahoot and then type in 4380, then you get all of the ones related to this course. So that was the synthetic polymers one. Yeah, sure. Let's see what we got here. Oh, one minute. All right. <laughs> far away. What? <laughs> I didn't know I could throw my voice. Maybe when I twist my head like that. <laughs> okay, classic mode. I don't know what team mode is. One of these days I have to explore what that is. Like, yeah. yeah, we need to do like Mario Kart teams mode. I love that game. It's the best. We could review on Mario Kart. That should be sweet. We could have instead of final, we'll just bring ours. I'll bring my Nintendo Switch. <laughs> be a great end of the year party. The two people in the corner taking their final while we're over here. Like, nah, that go hit a, you know, the blue turtle shell. <laughs> Whenever you're in the lead and that thing comes, oh my. Gosh, it makes me mad. There's 14. Okay. Ready? All right. We got the tiger with the eye patch. All right. I got my money on him. Oh, a little bit of review here. <laughs> oh, very good. 12 out of two, 12 out of 14. That's right. It just that stuff goes everywhere. So you were in the room. Hmm. <laughs> I was struggling to find answers. Come on, nobody for the breakfast cereal? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. It does kind of look like uh, Sugar Smacks, I think. You ever see the Sugar Smacks? Do they even make that anymore? No. Okay. Very good. How do you know they haven't been melted? You show the media. The sharp, sharp spikes. Yeah, they would have gone away. Just like a, think of an, uh, a snowflake. So the little things melt from the from the smallest features back in. And so this is a perfect score. I got to take a picture. <laughs> so I'm always proud of you guys when you get a perfect score. So come on. All right, very good. Nice. Picture of me taking a picture of the screen. <laughs> kind of weird. Four of four, here we go, last one. Which is the primer in this image? Quick. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> what? You're gonna mix it up here at the end. Oh, wow, pretty even split. <laughs> Okay, so we got to go over the parts of a cartridge again. So this is the primer. This is the thing that the firing pin hits. It starts the fire that lights the powder. This is the powder, which is inside the casing, which pushes the bullet out. So this is the bullet. Of course, it's a cutaway. It's not shaped like that. So. And so then the bullet has a cutout in the front. So what kind of bullet is this? Hollow point bullet. Yeah. And it's a hollow point, so it expands in whatever it hits so that it doesn't go through and just deposits all the energy into what it hits the first time. Yeah. I was too slow to <laughs> Yeah. All right. So here's the podium. What? I was like, I picked the one plate and you were like, Yeah. <laughs> That's a crazy little animal. Yay, the burger <laughs> with the cone on it. <laughs> the ice cream cone burger, man. Yeah. 
Okay, so let's. It knew which one was better. So let's see. All right. So. Yeah. Sure. It seems to me. I mean, that's what it looks like. But I think it's more of a it's more of a molecular thing. It's an allergic response. But I think that's it's kind of like the a big version of what we have on the on a virus particle. Those spike proteins. You know, those are the things that interact with 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 whatever it's trying to attack. Um, but it's a big version. Yeah. And it yeah definitely makes it sticky. So why? I mean, okay. Let me let me type in the forty three eighty. Y'all be thinking about which ones y'all want to do. Um, but whenever you have a corner, like right here on the corner of this laptop or, or like of this pen, like a spike, think about the end where the molecule is only got a few uh, friends to bond to. Whereas think about in the on the surface or in a bulk, you know, if you've got water in the in the in the middle of more water, it's very happy. It's surrounded by in all directions by water that that can hydrogen bond with it and polar forces and all of that. Put water on the surface, it's less happy. What is nature? When we talk about happy in nature, we mean low energy. So water to surface is higher energy than water in a bowl because it's 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 you've had to break half the bonds to get it to the surface. And that's why water has a surface tension because you're trying to break even more bonds. Then you put water on the tip of a, of a point and it really is missing a lot of its hydrogen bonding partners. And so it's really high energy. So pointy things are high energy. That's the point, bottom line, molecularly. So, so those little spikes are very sticky because they're high energy. They want to bond to something. And so when they get close to something, they touch it, and now they're lower energy. And, and so that's why spikes and, and tiny, tiny particles are almost impossible to remove. So they really latch on. And, and Velcro is really hook and, 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 and fiber, right? But still, it's the same kind of thing. We have lots of little spikes. It's almost like hooks. And so they stick to your clothing. They stick to your skin. They stick to your inside of your nose. And so that's a way pollen, and then of course it sticks to the butts of bees <laughs> and they go to the next plant and they get into the next plant. And this is like, we survive because of this. <laughs> so, yeah. Any more on the cahoots? Which one color, this one? Okay, let's see what we get. We should try team mode just to see. Does it put you on randomly as you join? So. No, actually, I think we can change. Can what change? if everybody chooses one side and nobody chooses the other? <laughs> Thinking well, of the basketball thing when I'm standing there and nobody's picking one. me. <laughs> you only have one phone per team. Yeah. So you like go to each side and then only like one phone. Oh, I got you. Oh, oh, that sounds very disruptive. <laughs> Hey, the Viking helmets. They're popular now. What did it pick? The mummy? No, it, she got angry at me for having a snowman. The randomly picked snowman. Well, can't have a snowman in April. Oh, I see. So it's a personal thing. It's in your personal space. Yes. What color system is completely numerical, avoiding color names? Get my camera ready for this 100% here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the CIE tri stimulus values. The tri stimulus is the XYZ. So those are the numbers. Very good. So close. The CIE standardized which of these color related factors? Mm -hmm. Choose your favorite, I guess. 
See, there are three checks. So the three, these three answers are correct. The illumination, the sample geometry, and the observer. What is the detector in all of these for the CIE system? So you should be thinking about the arrangement. They had a little screen, they had the lights, the, the three, three knobs, the sample geometry, the, the lights. This is the detector. So the person is the detector. So they couldn't really standardize people's eyes. So they standardized everything else and they got a whole bunch of people to go through and they realized, oh, wow, it's pretty standard, except for this odd guy that can't see red and green. <laughs> they detected color blindness. <laughs> so, yeah. <clears throat> they used to have color blindness tests for chemists, or at least they, in, in some places they may still do. What most affects the color seen by specular reflectance? Specular reflectance. So this is the angle preserved reflectance off of a surface. Yay, surface smoothness. I would, sorry guys, I wouldn't have predicted that. <laughs> I'm gonna get my smile in there too, because y'all are so good. Okay, good. All right, I'm posting these. No names are on here, so we're good. <clears throat> Mixing three lights, projecting red, green, and blue will result in what color? This is the difference between additive and subtractive color. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So if it's a projector, yeah, it's shining great red, green, and blue on the white spots. But if it's that ink on a page, that's subtractive color. So if you mix all three inks, it'll be black. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> so I gave it away. <laughs> I showed you I haven't looked at this quiz in a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Oh, good. That's right. <laughs> no, it wasn't organic enough. <laughs> Portable ATR, FTIR can easily characterize automotive paint with one scan. <laughs> they even show an image that kind of gives it away, right? So this image is showing you the ATR at all the different automotive coatings. And so it would take a bunch of different scans to kind of get all the different coatings. There was a famous... I don't know if it's actually, I don't know the case, so I can't tell if it was just a, a urban legend or what, but the, the chemist on the stand says, yeah, these paints are identical because the IR matched, but they were different color paints. It's like, whoopsie, they had an IR, the clear coat. And yeah, I had the same clear coat, but the color coating was different. And so they got shown to be, uh, yeah, not, not, not competent as they would like, so. See if the che cheeseburger ice cream man. <laughs> baby monkey and uh, space. What is that little space koala? Space koala. Is that a koala? Okay, very good. <laughs> y'all are fun. I'm glad y'all like these. I was worried when I first saw Kahoot. I was really worried that it was like too juvenile, you know, for college students. But I was like, yeah, y'all like it. Why is it not doing the thing? Yeah, all every competitive bone in my body comes out. Yeah, it's so funny. Yeah, so that's what that's what it was when I when I first. When I started doing them in class, I had the students who were like, Argh. and I was like, okay, good. They, this is not, <laughs> they're not sitting back there bored to death. They're like, oh, I got to get second, third, first, you know. Yeah, that's good, good stuff. Gamifying education. Yeah, that's right. Okay, which one? Okay, let me go back to the library.
We had the natural fibers one too. Did we do that one? Biopolymers. I don't know. One question. One question? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I didn't finish that quiz. <laughs> Let's see what it is. Oh, I should. Yeah, team mode. Let's just say that like y'all pick a champion, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So like two two leaders against each other. <clears throat> this is hardly hardly worth it for one question. <laughs> Look at that hair. <laughs> a pacifier. Yeah, that's strange. You get to pick if it has a pacifier or not, or is it like pizza with a monocle? <laughs> oh, I picked start before you get changed. <laughs> And what makes them so complex? I don't know how you answer that. I'm just, I guess that's the discussion part. Yeah. Oh, percentages. I've never seen percentages. Yeah, that's right. You No, I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, all of these are produced by plants, you know. So, um, so the discussion. What makes them so complex? I kind of alluded to that earlier one, one molecule at a time yeah and think about like starch and cellulose how they dif branch differently there's you know <clears throat> let's say a six membered uh six carbon sugar you got six attachment points take a, a regular polymer like you've got the double bond between two carbons so you really just have two attachment points now, it could be cis or trans, so you might have some more other combinations that way, but still, it, it, at most, four attachment points on a double-bonded carbon. And that uh, that sugar, six-membered sugar ring, all of those OHs are reactive, and so you have six different places you could branch off. And then you could flip the sugar and make it equatorial or, or uh, uh, you, know, be, you know, flip the chair and make equatorial OHs become axial OHs. So then that doubles it to like 12 combinations. So carbohydrate chemistry is ridiculously complicated. The proteins, one molecule at a time, you have 20 amino acids, plus a couple of spares, like the ones that contain selenium. So you've got all of those different ones. You still have the same linkages. So the amide linkage doesn't change, but the R groups change. And you've got basic R groups and acidic R groups and neutral R groups and all these kinds of things that are fantastic. You've got the sulfur R groups, which are super important because of the disulfide bonds that are stronger than the hydrogen bonds. So they can hold uh, also metals. So the metal clusters are held by the sulfur R groups. Yeah. So it's just incredible. And then natural rubber is kind of, I mean, it's got a lot of other substances in it, but you know, it's, we take the, it's kind of a semi-synthetic, I would say. We take the, the, the organic molecules out of the tree and then we mix those in with uh, cross-linking agents like sulfur. And so uh, I forget which, is it a Roman god, the Vulcan? Yeah. Yeah. Roman. Yeah. And it was, what was the god of what? It's not a forge. Of the forge yeah so heat and fire right uh, and then sulfur again is that that fire and brimstone brimstone is sulfur so it's associated with the god vulcan sulfur and so adding sulfur in with natural rubber polymers provided cross-linking and made it more rigid made it more tough and so that's what vulcanized rubber is they mixed in sulfur with natural rubber polymer and made this really strong vulcanized rubber and that's the first tires were made out of that so anyway that's what makes them so complex but really the the 14 the natural rubber is the the least complex of these here let's see what we did thanks for participating
Yeah, that must just be a survey. Yeah, so there's no winning. Sorry. Yeah. Let's see. We got it. Let's see. I'm trying to remember if arson evidence, if this is. Because there, there's like combustion. I think this is the one. Let's see. This is arson evidence is L17. This is L14. I think this is the one that's the physical evidence. So let's look at that one. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So let's start with that. These are all pretty short just because they were meant to be in class. Just four or five questions to not take up the whole class period, but it's a good review. Oh, yeah. I like the Mario theme. I wish it was the... Da -da 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 -da. What basic principle helps you identify the origin of almost any fire? <laughs> Yay! All right. Y'all are so good. You got to do the thumbs up on this one. Give me a five second timer. Five seconds is a long time. <laughs> All right, so that's great. Who oh, has the fastest thumb speed? Arson investigator must wait for a search warrant before gathering evidence. Ten, like that, right away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they don't have to wait. They just barge in. Right? They have to ask the uh, fire destruction crew if they saw anything funny. So this NIJ report that we talked about in class tried to tie, tie the burn pattern to something. <clears throat> yeah, they were trying to tie it to an amount. Like, because this was this a reasonable amount, like a, a quart of cooking oil or something that got knocked off the counter. You know, and a candle fell over or something like that. But, or was this five gallons of gasoline <laughs> in your living room? Yeah, it's like, why would you have that much? They concluded that the heat released by a spill on carpet was. Yep, about the same. So carpet, really thick, it holds onto that fuel and it just burns off the top, kind of like a pool of fuel. It's so hard to say. And what is this called? <laughs> Accident waiting to happen. A Red Bull. <laughs> All right, we're good. Get that timer off there, man. That was too long. Okay, we'll just we'll just grin real big. Let me get the whole class. Get you guys back. Let's go. Okay. Got everybody. It's been fun. <clears throat> good old Molotov. Oh, you did <laughs> Yay, good job. <laughs> Get the headphones on. <laughs> All right. Oops. Got the great music. It's going to be in my head all day now. <laughs> what else do we want to do? We've got 15 minutes. <clears throat> Let's 
Gin Rummy? No. <laughs> Mario Kart. Mario Kart, yeah, I know. I need to have a browser version of Mario Kart, man. That'd be so cool. Just download your yeah, Smash Bros with 18 people, 14 people. <laughs> <laughs> I would be Kirby and just eat everybody. <laughs> That's the only combination I've discovered, and I'm like, I'm just going to eat everybody. <clears throat> Okay. Will y'all be terribly disappointed if I let you go early? No. You'd understand. <laughs> <it>. <laughs> I know. It's just, we're winding down. What do you think about that? Y'all are getting close to graduating. Yes, he graduated.